Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, uh, to Motor City Wrestling episode 165, live from Lafayette, Louisiana. Guess I'm still a little hung up after Extreme Takedown Wrestling last night. No, uh, not too far away from here, it seems like, given that that was in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, kind of a funny place there. But either way, we got a great big show planned out for you guys here tonight with a fucking amazing main event scheduled. Starting things off, Kamikaze Marty and Jay Baker, these two, uh, these two know each other very well, and they're going to collide one on one in the ring in our opener. After this, we got Joe Sullivan and Oxley facing off for a spot in the Soul Survivor Tournament. Izzy Phelps and Selena Dominguez in singles action right after that. That's our mid card match of the night. Back to the Soul Survivor Tournament. We're going to have another qualifier, that one between Duncan Jones and Drew Campbell. And of course, our main event of the evening. Doomsday from Extreme Takedown Wrestling are crossing the pond over to Motor City Wrestling to take on Aztexco and Deuce in an elimination, a Soul Survivor elimination uh, tag team match. And thank you, Jordan, for the 100 bits, bro. <laughs> For the mother queen. <laughs> yeah, I saw you say something about it messing up last night, but <laughs> either way, I appreciate the 100 bits regardless. But now we're going to go ahead and get on with our first match Kamikaze Marty and Jay Baker one on one. There we go. Feels like it's been a while since we've seen Kamikaze Marty on our TV screens. I, I feel like that's a bit of a theme here with a lot of the superstars. What the hell did you just say, Brendan? Why, wait, why the fuck? Hang on. What the hell? Why the hell do you mute him? I'm s All right. All right, well. <laughs> Either way, uh, betting has started, so... From Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 251 pounds, Jay Baker. You know, Brendan, I think it's the fact that you said anything at all. Jordan was just ready. He sensed that you're going to say something that we don't appreciate here in the PWA. And, well, he was a little trigger happy. Probably rightfully so, to be honest. Because honestly, Jordan, I feel like you may have just prevented a catastrophe. So good on you. Anyway, uh, back to the action here. Jay Baker and Kamikaze Marty. These are two superstars who know each other very well, and I can't even talk about it. Because Jordan coming in with the gift sub. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. As I was saying, Kamikaze Marty, Jay Baker, these two know each other extremely well. Dating back to that big rivalry between the Atlanta boys and the Bakers that lasted for a number of months here in the UPWA. What the hell? This match hasn't even been going on for, for two seconds yet. And wait from behind, Sean Goldman! Just lays out Jay Baker with the bull hammer elbow and can't quite figure out how to get out of the ring. There he goes. Now over the past number of weeks, Sean Golden and the Bakers have been at odds against each other. It all started in that Soul Star return to qualifier match between Seth Baker and Sean Goldman, where Seth eventually just got too frustrated to continue on to the match and so he took a disqualification by attacking Sean Golden with a steel chair. 
This rivalry has continued to escalate over the past number of weeks. We've seen it escalate again tonight as Sean Golden looks to cost Jay Baker this match against Kamikaze Marty. But Baker doing a good job at keeping the interference. Well, keeping its effects to, uh, to a minimum. Or, or, or what, the, what the fuck is it? What the hell? I've never seen this before. Can I, like, interrupt this? What, wait, wait, what? I can't. The game is fucking broken. I have never seen this happen before. I'm not even touching the controller. That's a new one. That's for sure. Well then. <laughs> well then. Don't really have any other option here, do I? Uh, well, you saw during the commercial break, well, just before the commercial break, Sean Goldman attacked Jay Baker. Hitting with that bull hammer elbow. Now Kamikaze Marty has finally been able to take advantage of the situation. Sends Baker to the outside off that clothesline. These two brawling at ringside now. Baker quick to shut him down though with a backbreaker. Now going to pick him back up. It's not even 2K20 or 2K22. How the fuck is that glitch happening in 2K19, bro? Baker a hard knee to the midsection and a right hand as well. Now dumps him over his knee and unloads these knee strikes right into the skull of Kamikaze Marty. There's one more for good measure. And wait a second. Sean Goldman's not done. Jay Baker once again suspects that he's coming down the ramp, but once again, Sean Goldman is standing right behind him. At least this time he could figure out how to get on the damn ring. Kamikaze Marty going for the cover here off of a second interference courtesy of Sean Goldman and only gets a two. Look, no one ever said the Bakers were smart. Marty that float over in the DDT plants. The opponent there going for the cover now, hooking the outside leg, and only a one. Now, I've mentioned before that these two know each other extremely well. You gotta know that they've got their opponent's finishing moves scouted as much as they possibly can. Kamikaze Marty's going to be avoiding that Baker driver as well as possible in this contest, and Jay Baker going to do his best to avoid the CQK. Both these superstars have been down the receiving ends of the, of their finishers many times over the past couple of years. We could see them be hit on each other once again here tonight, but Kamikaze Marty backs up to the corner. He's setting him up and looks for the spear. Well, it's got a one in it's got a one in ten chance of failing, and I guess, I guess uh, Marty just got a nat one on there. Either way, Jay Baker looking to capitalize a kick to the back and to pick him back up. And now the very southern uppercut. Now going to drag Marty back towards the middle of the ring. Hook of the outside leg to score the win. But he only gets a two. This match going to continue on for better or for worse. As Kamikaze Marty looks for the kicks of the gut. He gets caught. Uh, this time gets it. Now follows up. Rings the arm. And targeting the shoulder now, rings it even more and just slams Baker down on his back. You fucking said it, Jordan. <laughs> but now Baker's back in control over the top rope and down to the floor. This match goes once again. Kicks to the gut from Kamikaze Marty. This time it connects. Looking to get back inside the ring, but Jay Baker intercepts him with that inverted cradle slam. Now going to pick Marty back up, but there's the reversal. A kick to the leg, and now gets back inside. Jay going to follow him in, but Marty is in control. Shoots him off the ropes, and oh, Baker with the reversal. Knee to the gut, and now setting him up. Looking for the hammerlock DDT. 
It's awfully rare that we see the Bakers execute that patented DDT of theirs. But somehow, Kamikaze Marty is going to find a way to kick out of it. As I said before, Marty's been hit by a lot of Baker drivers. He wasn't quite expecting uh, the Hammerlock DDT from Jay Baker to be executed. Now going to send Baker into the corner, send him to the outside. While he's at it, once again, this match falls to the outside of the ring. And Kamikaze Marty going to go through the turnbuckle for a torpedo DDT. Picks him back up. Roundhouse kick gets him on the shoulder. Looking for one to the side. That one gets caught. Baker, no. Reversal for Marty. Kick got caught. Elbow to the knee. And now it's Baker getting back inside. So does Kamikaze Marty. Turns him around. Looking for the... Oh, that crush. But how is Kamikaze Marty going to capitalize? Trying to roll out the damage on that shoulder he sustained in this match. It looks like he's uh, taking a bit of a toll there on his arm. But now that Baker's up, he's looking to finish him off with his cradle DDT. Not done yet. Jay Baker rising back up to his feet, but Kamikaze Marty's waiting for him there. Has him locked.
Jewish people when I went there. Just a bunch of black dudes playing basketball. Uh, OBS did not crash. I'm fucking down to you, bro. Name the time and place, homie. As long as I am busier in school or some shit, man. As long as we can get four people again. That actually was fun to tell. Alright. Joe Sullivan, Oxley, take two. Let's try it again. Or right, we got it farther than last time. Sonoran Savage, he's making his return to the ring after uh, after being gone for a month. Last time that we saw Joe Sullivan was in his losing effort against Devin Rust about five weeks ago on Motor City Wrestling. But tonight he is back and he is looking to prove to everybody that he belongs in the Soul Survivor Tournament. Now Joe Sullivan is, is a superstar that I've doubted many times in the past. But it seems as though when you doubt him, he only becomes stronger. Will that remain to be the case tonight as he looks to qualify for his second Soul Survivor Tournament? And then there's the Brisbane Bruiser. The man they call Oxley. Last night on Extreme Takedown Wrestling, Oxley scored the pinfall victory over the leader of Darkness Incarnate, that being Tommy Blaine. Now next month at Soul Survivor Blood Money, that being Damian Deaver and Brian Brutus, are going to take on Darkness Incarnate being represented by Logan Black and Jordan Carr in the Tag Team Champions vs. Champions match. But Oxley is going to look to keep himself busy by qualifying for the Proving Ground, or for the Soul Survivor Tournament, excuse me, for the second time in his career. And the last time that both of these men were in the Soul Survivor Tournament was last year. Oxley managed to survive until the third round. The first round, he defeated Duncan Jones. The second round got a bye, and in the third round, he was eliminated by Tyler Van Diver. Joe Sullivan, on the other hand, had worse luck last year at Soul Survivor. It was part of the first four superstars eliminated as, t as part of the Motor City Wrestling side of the tournaments. Was eliminated by J uh, Jacob Fisher in the first round. So you have to expect Sullivan is not only looking to get back into the tournament for that opportunity in the UPW Championship, but also wants to redeem himself for getting eliminated so early on last time around. But Sullivan now back inside the ring. There's a right hand and a boot to the face. Just drops Oxley where he stands. But Oxley now from behind. Inverted. Uh, or rather a, ba uh, a, a backbreaker there. Couldn't quite find the name for it for a second. Follows up with an elbow drop. Now Joe Sullivan, in my opinion, holds the power advantage in this contest. No doubt is a bigger 
athletes than his opponents tonight, but you have to wonder, Oxley, he's pretty powerful in his own right, you know, with a lower center of gravity, is that going to give him an advantage over this Norton Savage? Joe Sullivan, though, looking for a uh, back scoop of some sort, it looked like. Oxley able to fire back, though, turn things around and give him a scoop slam. Going for the cover now, hook the outside leg. And only a two count. The Soul Survivor Tournament's got to mean a lot more to Oxley this year than, uh, than last time around. As he now sets Sullivan up here. Has on his shoulders looking for the spinning power slam. Plants Sullivan in the center of the ring. Hook of the outside leg once again. And he only gets a two count. As I was saying, you have to expect that the tournament's going to mean a lot more to Oxley this year than last year. That being because Oxley as of late has been on the hunt for regaining the UPW Championship. He lost the title to, uh, well, last month at Apocalypse.
championship until after Soul Survivor. She is going to go on to hold that championship for at least 63 days. Which will put her right behind Izzy Phelps' 65 day that came just before hers. But of course, this match right here, while there's nothing on the line for Dominguez or for Phelps, Dominguez is going to want to continue to be a dominant champion by defeating this challenger before she can even become a challenger. And not only that, without a doubt, Dominguez wants the win so that she can earn momentum heading into the Soul Survivor Champion versus Champion match against Akane Tanaka. But now we're gonna gonna, gonna begin this match. It is Phelps and Dominguez one on one, looking for a boot to the chest to start things off. Phelps able to catch it, but misses the Inzagiri. Dominguez ducks it. Now sends her into the corner. Sets her up now, looking for a vertical. Oh no, a brain buster! But wait a minute. Akane Tanaka from Extreme Takedown Wrestling, the UPWA Women's Champion, is here on the blue and white brand. And out from behind, Izzy Phelps' jackknife cover rolls up the champion and only a one. Like I said a moment ago, Phelps, or, uh, Dominguez and Tanaka will battle in a champion versus champion match next month at Soul Survivor, but it looks like Tanaka's here to get a better look at her opponents before these two collide. And speaking of collisions, we can't forget about their uh, encounter at Titans Collide. After uh, Blood Money de successfully de defended the UPW Tag Team titles against Aztexico, we saw them get ambushed by Doomsday and before Tanaka could do anything, before she could help her uh, her faction against the attackers, we saw Selena Dominguez show up and fully even the odds to take Tanaka out of the fray and uh, take her up the well through the crowd during that brawl. Perhaps Tanaka out here to get some revenge for that, but either way, this match continues on. Phelps looking for a super kick. Dominguez able to dodge it, shoots her, or sends her into the corner, and there's a clothesline taking her down. Into the cover now, has the lateral press, but she only gets a one. Phelps with a reversal though, kicks to the gut, and a rolling axe kick. I'm not so sure if Phelps is at 100% here tonight mentally. We saw her miss that super kick, saw her miss that Inzagiri, just saw her miss that uh, rolling axe kick a moment ago. It seems like she's choking as, against the champion here tonight. And this is not the time or place that you want to uh, be making these kinds of mistakes. But now finally starting to get back into it here with that attack in the corner. Going to pick the champion up. But a knee to the gut catches her. And now Dominguez. Nope. Misses. And now it's Phelps who capitalizes off the Pele kick. Going to pick Dominguez up and send her into the corner. And now punch right to the midsection. Phelps up to the top turnbuckle. Looking for a ride to Raleigh. They're now going to go for the cover. Drags away from the most veteran move there by Izzy Phelps. But she only gets a two. Phelps looking to follow up though, sends the champion into the corner. And now throws her to the outside of the ring. What's Phelps thinking here? Gonna go through the turnbuckle for a torpedo DDT. Taking the champion down once again. Gonna pick her right back up though and send her back inside the ring where she can capitalize properly. Rolls her over. Gonna drag her towards the ropes and go for the cover here. Feet on the ropes as well for good measure. Ref doesn't see a thing, ain't only a two. Dominguez nearly defeated there off that dirty pin. But regardless, she managed to come back, fight on, and now could be looking to put her opponent away here tonight. 
Lifts Phelps up and drops her down on her head off the Diablo detonator. Going to go for the cover here, but the referee distracted with a Kane Tanaka over in the corner. Never saw the pin take place. And you're not going to lie, I kind of feel like this match would have been over otherwise. But regardless, kick right to the chest. And now a kick to the gut. Phelps looking for code red. And now Phelps starting to get fired up here. Going to pick her up. There's a flying forearm. And a, a second one. Now going to finish off this sequence with a Pele kick. Dominguez is stunned. Phelps looking to capitalize. Kicks to the gut. Looking for the twist of fate, but Dominguez with the reversal. And now Phelps rolls underneath the bottom rope and climbs up from the apron to create some much-needed separation at this juncture. However... Dominguez able to knock her back.
battled, battled it out in an elimination fatal four match, where in the end Shinzo Tabata would defeat the now former European champion to win back the title and become a two-time champion. But Duncan Jones gonna look past that, gonna look past the European Championship and look to move forward once again to capturing the UPWA title. Now Duncan Jones, this is his opportunity to qualify for the Soul Survivor Tournament for the second time in his career last year. He faced off against Oxen in the first round and was eliminated right off the bat. Drew Campbell, on the other hand, typically the Campbell Club are involved in the champion, the tag team champions versus champions match. But this year, no member of the Campbell Club is a champion. That leaves Drew available to enter the Soul Survivor Tournament where only one time in the past has any member of the Campbell Club competed. And that one other time took place at Soul Survivor 2019 when Cody Campbell competed against Xander Storm in the first round and was promptly eliminated. But never before has Drew Campbell been able to enter the prestigious tournament. Perhaps this year will be different. This match rolls on, though Drew Campbell in firm control, looking for a drop kick there, I believe. It was setting up for the drop kick. Jones with the reversal, close line over the top rope, and sends him down to the floor. And now Duncan off the top, turnbuckle going all in for a Hurricane Rana, but he overshot it just a bit. There's that inexperience once again coming into play, but Jones able to shake it off, get back into it with that moonsault. Now going to pick Jones back up. There's the reversal to pick Campbell back up, excuse me. Campbell now looking for a suplex, but Jones with the reversal knee to the top of the head. Now throws him back inside. Quick stomp. But hold on. Oh, kicks uh, punch in the midsection. Follows up with the Famouser. But Drew Campbell with the reverse of the jawbreaker connects. Hang on, was setting up there. Drew, uh, Jones able to sidestep him. Get out of the way, but he's not able to get out of the way of that neck breaker. And now Drew Campbell setting up, looking for the Campbell kick. Into the cover hook of the outside leg, only a two count. Jones able to get the shoulder up and keep his chances of qualifying for Soul Survivor alive. But for how much longer will the dream remain for Duncan Jones as Drew looks to shut him down? Elbow drop connect connected a moment ago. Jones follows up though, able to get the reversal. But now it's Cable back in the tree. Oh, never mind. Jones, not allowing him to capitalize, gets the backbreaker instead. Now drags him back towards the middle of the ring, setting him up here. Out to the apron goes Jones. And now back inside, he goes, gets the slam dunk. But not going to go for the cover. Instead, Wait, no, now he does. With his knee pressed firmly into Campbell's chest, but he only gets a two count. That was a very cocky pin by Duncan Jones. I don't think he fully expected to get the cover right there, but he just wanted to make Drew Campbell know that he is in full control of this matchup right now. Now sends him off into the sky for that flapjack, just drops him back down to the canvas. And once again, flapjacks him. Still not finished, gonna send him off to these ropes and gets with a flapjack. Can go around the world with it. And no, this time Campbell with the reversal. The clothesline takes him down. Quick club to the back. Now gonna pick Jones up. Bring him up against the ropes and slingshot him back into the middle of the ring. Picks him back up. Rolls him through, looking for a schoolboy super kick. Jones may be out after that one, but Duncan, but Drew Campbell is not convinced. Set him up once again for this Campbell kick, and I think that's going to do it for this kid. 
Campbell drags him back towards the middle of the ring. Hooks the leg. One, two, and no! DJ has still got some fight left in him. But Drew Campbell, looking to finish him off here and now, has Hell's Gate locked in. And, and Jones with nowhere to go, he's forced to tap out. You have to give credit where it's due. Duncan Jones refused to stay down for the count of three. It wasn't until he was physically forced to give up in this matchup that he finally did. And it seems like the, uh, the backstage crew... I feel like it may have been a botch. I don't think that he was supposed to tap out right there. They ain't got his theme song ready. <laughs> I feel like Jones was supposed to win there, but uh, Drew Campbell decided to take some liberties. Decided to execute his creative control the hard way, if you will. Got pissed at Duncan Jones for, uh, for not putting over the Campbell kick. All right, there you go. Finally, the awkward silence is over. Congratulations, Drew Campbell going to join the likes of Joe Sullivan, who qualified earlier tonight, Straight Edge and Sean Goldman for the rest of team or for the rest of Motor City Wrestling, as well as Pedro and Marco Rodriguez, Xander Storm and Jacob Fisher, as well as two other men, one for each brand. Who we will find out who those two will be next week on XCW and MCW. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time, it is officially time, for our main event of the evening. Stick around, because coming up next, we have Doomsday and Aztexco and Deuce taking each other, well, taking, facing off in an elimination six-man tag team match with Soul Survivor rules in effect. Doing pretty good this year. He's only six and two. <laughs> well, only two losses. Let me go ahead and pay out the winners real quick. Congratulations to the two of you. The two of you guys who bet on uh, Drew Campbell there. Uh, I'll pay out a three. I thought I thought that was a pretty good match. Like I said, coming up next, we have a six-man tag team match with a, with a Soul Survivor-style elimination stipulations in play. In this match, the team of Pedro Rodriguez as well as Kenny and Johnny Eglay from Extreme Take Down Rust are going to be taking on the team of Loki Lopez, Santana Santos, and Deuce just four week, well, just uh, a month away from Soul Survivor, getting ourselves a little press for the big stage. Making sure everyone knows, uh, remembers the rules, I suppose. Low-key, though, I think this is going to be a good fucking match. Got Peter Rodriguez and the UK Re champion on one side. The, uh, well, a team that was undefeated for 14 months, as well as the purebred athlete on the other side. Like, I, I'm looking forward to this one. And luckily, we don't have to wait for too much longer. Doomsday versus Aztecs go and Deuce. Soul Survivor style six-man elimination tag is up next.
making his way to the ring at a combined weight of 645 pounds, Pedro Rodriguez, Kenny Knight Blade, and Johnny Knight Blade. Now, there's been a lot of tension within Doomsday over the past month or two. I think over the past month. Kenny and Johnny Blade weren't entirely sure where Peter Rodriguez's allegiances lied. Whether he was still loyal to Doomsday or if he was more leaning towards Aztexico. Seeing as how Rodriguez has been making all these uh, all these deals with Aztecs without consulting with Aztecs. But last week at Titans Collide, Rodriguez made his allegiance very clear. After they fin finished their ambush on Doom on uh, on Blood Money, following the UPW Tag Team Championship match, Doomsday went on to take out Aztecs as well, severing any sort of alliance that there may have been between the two groups. And now tonight we're seeing the culmination of that obliteration. Because tonight, Doomsday, and our sex will collide, as well as the purebred athlete Deuce, who's made his intentions clear, that he's going for the UPW Championship that's currently around Johnny Nightblade's waist. kind of interesting that all six of these men have been in involved in their own individual title pursuits over the past couple of weeks. Two weeks ago on Extreme Takedown Wrestling, Kenny Nightblade and Peter Rodriguez unsuccessfully challenged Darkness Incarnate for the World Tag Team Championship. The next week at Titans Collide, Aztecio unsuccessfully challenged for the uh, UP and Tag Team titles. Deuce lost his European Championship, and Johnny Blade retained the UP WA Championship. But now that Darkness Incarnate and Blood Money are on a, coll on a collision course, the same seems to be for the two teams that used to be the number one contenders. And then, of course, we have the purebred athletes, the two-time winner of the Soul Survivor Tournament. And that second time is very key as to why he's here. Tonight. Like I said last week, Deuce lost the European Championship in that fatal four-way elimination match to Shinzo Tabata. It was a brutal fight between all four men. And when we came down to the final two, those being Deuce and Tabata, the intensity was turned up to 11. But by the end of things, Shinzo Tabata got his redemption by defeating the Pure Red Athletes to win back the European Championship. Now, normally Deuce would be eyeing that European title. He'd be looking to get that championship back around his waist. However, 
after Deuce lost the European Championship, he reviewed his uh, contract that he won by winning the Soul Survivor Tournament last year. And since he was unable to compete, uh, unable to activate his European Championship match at Sandstorm, like originally planned, well, it turns out that he's that that opportunity the EPW title is still active right now and will be active until the end of this year's Soul Survivor Tournament. And so Deuce, he's decided to give up his claim at the European Championship. Instead, he wants that UPW title shot that he never got despite having earned it last year. And so as Soul Survivor, Deuce and Johnny Nibley will collide for the UPW Championship, but tonight they're going to meet in this elimination six-man tag match. And starting things off, it is the two luchadors, Pedro Rodriguez and Locoli Lopez. These two have no shortage of history with one another. Now Rodriguez has Lopez, going to bring him into the corner, no, up against the ropes instead. And now brings him, well, drapes him over that middle rope, goes up and over with a hot shot. He actually didn't, Brendan. He never got his UPW Championship match. Because at, Soul Sur at, uh, at Sandstorm, just before Sandstorm, he got injured by Cody Gray. So Tyler Van Diver ultimately got the opportunity instead. Now Lopez is going to bring Rodriguez into the corner, but a boot to the face from Rodriguez, enough to create some separation now, throws Lopez into the opposite corner, over to Doomsday, there's the step up kick, looking to follow up, brings him into the corner again, this time makes the tag to Johnny Nightbleed. These guys setting up, there's the sleeper slam, and the high low connects. Into the cover goes Johnny, but Deuce is right there to break things up. And now Nightblade eyeing his number one contender for the UPWA Championship for just a moment. But I think that momentary distraction has cost him because now Lopez is back in control. Has him by the hair and brings him face first into the corner. Tag made to Santana Santos. And now sends him right into Santos who leaps off the middle rope to get that clothesline. But Nightblade with the reversal going to sweep the leg. Drags him back towards the middle of the ring. And a running neck twist connects. We're going to follow up here. Hurricane Rana takes the opponent down. And follows up with a spinning leg drop. Now going to drag Lopez, or going to drag Santos, excuse me, back towards the middle of the ring. Picks him back up. Kicks to the gut. Gets caught. Single leg takedown by Santos. Rolls him over. Has the legs tied up. And now the leg trapped STF is fully applied, trying to force a tap out in the center of the ring, but Nightblade finds the escape. Kicks in the gut, drops him down to a knee, and connects with the DDT. Santos avoids the elbow, but Nightblade regains control. Has him by the back of his mask, trying to bring him into the corner, but Santos with the elbows to the midsection, able to force a break. Into the corner now, handspring, back elbow, Nightblade gets out of the way though. And now Johnny trying to bring him back to Doomsday's corner, but Santana Santos had it scouted. Was able to break free from the hold. Gonna turn around here, using the turnbuckle for some steps up, gets Destino into the cover. Is that gonna do it for the UP3 champion? He only gets the two count. Santos picks him right back up. Sends him into the corner. No wasted motion here. And wait a second. He's setting the UPW champion up here. Has him tied up and upside down to the tree of woe. Santos now to the opposite end of the ring. Going up to the top turnbuckle. Saying his prayers. Santana Santos. Looking to go coast to coast. And that could do it for the UPWA champion. Santos into the cover, hooks the leg. But Pedro Rodriguez not only takes out the pin, but also takes out the referee and locally Lopez. A three for one special 
by Pedro Rodriguez. And now looking to do the save to Santana Santos. Breaks free. Now it's Nightblade in control again. But Santos able to break free. Elbows to the gut. Knife Edge chops, sends him into the corner. But there's the reversal from Nightblade. Back elbow from Santos. Now kicks to the gut. Got caught. Spinning heel kick. Champion going to pick Santos up again. Has him up on his shoulder. And could be looking for the neck blader. And follows up with a standing shooting star for good measure. Now going to go to the top rope for another variation of it. Setting up here for San Diego Starlight. Into the cover. Hooks the leg. But again, Deuce breaks up the pin. Wait a second though, Johnny Nightblade's had enough of the purebred athlete. Sunset flip powerbomb. So the purebred athlete sends him all the way down to the floor. Not sure what the hell uh, Nightblade's doing here now. He's gonna get back inside the ring, focus on the legal opponent. And from behind, brings him back down. Off the, sun, or off the uh, Russian leg sweep. Johnny makes that tag. No, Santos makes the tag to Lopez. Johnny Nightblade, not, Nightblade not going to make a tag. Instead takes a single leg drop kick and a clothesline and another drop kick. Now try and make that tag. Almost gets there, but he gets cut off in the pass. Now it's Lopez with the monkey flip. Quick stop there. Wait a second. Inside cradle. Inside cradle. One. Oh, no. Lopez kicks out. But Kenny Nightblade right there on Deuce to make sure he can't break it up. And now, well, a lot of people in the ring, bit of a miscommunication there. Rodriguez trying to get a strike on Lopez. He's too quick, though. Able to dodge a basement drop kick and a super kick. Now hits La Profecia. Into the cover. Kenny Nightblade distracting the referee. One. Two. No. Rodriguez kicks out. Had the referee not been distracted, I think Rodriguez would have been eliminated right there. But this match keeps on going for him. We are still in a three-on-three -three scenario. Lopez looking to do some more damage here as he baseball slide drop kicks Rodriguez across the ringside area. Rodriguez back up, kicks the leg, and now a... No. He's looking for a, uh, a straight jacket DDT on the floor. Lopez was able to reverse, now trying to pick Rodriguez up, not going to work. Kicks the leg. Rodriguez, though, has him by the... Oh, by the mask and slams him head first into the steps. Oh, and a super kick just lays Lopez out. Count of six by the referee. Now a count of seven, which Rodriguez planning here. Going to bring Lopez back inside. And now gets in it as well at the count of eight. Lopez sends him into the corner. Going to go to the middle rope here. Setting up here. Looking for Templo Azteca. The Nightblade's trying to get involved. The referee doing a great job at preventing them from getting inside the ring. And as long as it remains one on one, Lopez is going to be able to continue this slew of offense against Pedro Rodriguez. Now brings him to the corner. Tag is made. The Santana Santos, these guys setting up for an assisted La Profecia. Going for the cover now, hook to the outside leg. To eliminate Rodriguez, only gets a count of one before Kenny Blade breaks things up. Santana Santos, I think, getting a bit frustrated there. Goes to the outside for a moment to catch his breath. But now looking to refocus on the task at hand. That being finishing off Pedro Rodriguez. Going to pick him back up. Running Spanish fly. Now brings him into the corner. Santos makes the tag back to Lopez. Rolls are reversed. But the outcome remains the same.
the assistant Profesio once again. Lopez back into the cover. Wait a second, though. Nightblade taken care of. And no Rodriguez kicks out. Deuce got rid of the UPW champion there. Gave Lopez the opportunity to get the three count. But unfortunately for uh, Deuce and Aztexico, Rodriguez was able to kick out on his own accord to stay alive. Now the pace slowing down here. Try Lopez looking to make a tag to Deuce, I believe. Meanwhile, Rodriguez trying to crawl to Nightblade. Deuce is tagged in. Rodriguez has to focus on him. Super kick drops him down to a knee. A lot of history between these two guys as well. Dating all the way back to the PRA. Sends him into the corner. Deuce able to sidestep him. Now Rodriguez back up. Gets a jawbreaker. And makes the wise tag to Kenny Nightblade while he has an opportunity. Majorana takes Deuce down momentarily, but now the Peterbilt athlete is back up, but so is Nightblade. These two are the freshest men in the ring. They have not been tagged in once thus far. Finally, they are legal, and finally they get to take their aggressions out on one another. Kenny going to launch him off the ropes, but Deuce with a big knee to the midsection turns him around. There's Ripcord, Boston knee party. Now the cover has the leg hooked. But Nightblade still has a lot of fight left in him. Able to easily kick out at two. Quick back elbow caught the sole survivor. Now lifts Deuce up. Looking for the neck blader. He's able to, able to escape though. And now a clothesline over the top hook and down to the floor. Sends Nightblade out to ringside where Deuce is going to join him. And now brings him right back inside the ring. Does not want to give Nightblade any chance to escape. There's a boot of Doom. <clears throat> Kenny trying to crawl back to Doomsday's corner. He's bitten off too much. Uh, more than he can chew, it seems. By stepping into the ring with the purebred athlete. But now Deuce steps through. Steps over. Has the sharpshooter locked in. Trying to force the submission. Out of Kenny Nightblade, but he's able to find an escape. Roll onto his back and shove Deuce off. But Deuce is still in control. Looking for Wasteland. And a running Senton as well. But still not done. Looking to finish him off once and for all here tonight. Kicks in the gut. Lifts him up. Deuce is wild. And into the cover. Referee distracted with Doomsday. Has that leg hooked. One, two, and only a two. Doomsday once again providing distractions to the referee. Took too long for him to notice the pinfall taking place. And that gave Nightblade enough energy to kick out. But once again he gets hit by Deuce's Wild. Is that going to do it for him? And no, still only a two count. Lopez takes care of Peter Rodriguez, but Nightblade kicks out on his own accord. <clears throat> Deuce, though, still in control. And, oh! Stiff forearm shots to the back of the neck, trying to make that tag to Johnny. But Deuce manages to isolate Ken Nightblade even further. Cut him off at the pass, drags him to a sexiest corner, makes the tag to locally Lopez. <clears throat> And now Nightblade sends him shoulder first into the canvas, looking to make that tag finally. So Johnny, maybe not. I think Johnny's still a bit exhausted, still wants to take some uh, time to recover. But that may have been a mistake. Kenny sends him to the corner, no back elbow. Now setting Lopez up, rolls through, drop toe hold, takes him down. And now it's Lopez sending him into the corner. Stalking his prey, was waiting for that perfect opportunity to strike. Whenever that opportunity may present itself. And finally, La Profecia. Going for the pin here, hook of the leg. And that's going to do it for Kenny Nightblade. It is now two on three.
in favor of Oz Texaco and Deuce. Give me just a second here. It's going to take me a minute to get this on Discord. There we go. All right, it is a two-on-three handicap officially. And at this stage, if either member of Doomsday goes for the cover, I got to take control of the opposition. to keep things fair. But it looks like Locust is going to be able to kick out right there, but maybe not for long. Nightblade setting up here, looking for the spear! And once again, going to go ahead and do my thing real quick here, and uh, there we go. And the cover goes Nightblade, and Lopez kicks out. Lopez managing to keep himself alive in this match. But Nightblade has to stay focused. He's got him on the ropes. Gonna make that tag to Pedro. Can he finish Lopez off? You have to remember. Looking for a kick to the midsection. Lopez gets out of the way. Sends him into the corner now. And now setting up here looking for Templo Azteca. And Nightblade, I think, has had enough distracting Lopez for a moment. Giving Rodriguez some time here will be enough. Lopez to the top rope. Wait a sec, what's he setting up for? Waiting for Rodriguez to get back up. Looking for a diving hurricane gets caught. Powerbomb! Just got jackknifed into the canvas. Rodriguez is back in control. But not for long. Lopez with an uppercut. Has him staggered. La Profecia! Is that going to be good for Rodriguez? One. Two. We're down to a one on three. It is the UPW champion versus Deuce. And Deuce just with ease lifts Nightblade up. Slams him into the canvas. Only a two. Now Nightblade, single leg drop kick, takes Deuce down, follows up the standing shooting star. We're down to the UPW champion. He's taking notice of the odds he is faced with right now. Deuce, though, gonna go behind and get the gut buster. Nightblade is a king without a castle, a man with no country, a UPW champion with no stable to back him. Gonna send Deuce into the corner. He's able to dodge him, though. Now looking to take advantage. Sends him into the canvas. At this moment, Nightblade is taking out Aztecico and his number one contender in a three-on-one handicap match. These are insurmountable odds. We're gonna see if the UPW champion can stick to it and find a way to persevere here tonight. Deuce with the snapmare takes him down. And now looking for... Oh, just the head bow right to the forehead. Nightblade is hurt. Deuce going to drag him back towards the middle of the ring. No way. Deuce going to gorilla press him. F from a deadlift and just drops him down. With authority. Nightblade's been busted open. Now Deuce looking for a German suplex. Nightblade's just getting manhandled right about now. Suits the leg, now gonna go to the top turnbuckle here. Set him up, looking for San Diego Starlight. And y'all know how it is. Y'all know how it is. Oh no. Go for the pin, go for the fucking pin, good. Is that gonna do for Deuce? No, he kicks out at two, this match continues. For the purebred athlete. And that's got to be heartbreaking 
if you're Johnny Ugly, who's going to go to the top turnbuckle again. What's he thinking this time? Waiting for Deuce to get back up. And now off the ropes, looking for... Oh my, oh my god! Sit out last ride! From Deuce, he caught the Hurricane Rana and makes him pay dearly. Now a kick to the gut. Sets him up for Deuce's wild. Into the cover, hooks the leg. It's all academic from here. A competitor has been Deuce and as Texico walk away with a clean sweep. That was a great match between all six of these competitors. Here are your winners, Loco Lee Lopez, Santana Santo, and Deuce. Personally, I wasn't sure how Deuce and Lopez were going to get along given their history. But tonight, Aztexico and Deuce were able to get the job done clean sweeping. Doomsday. And... Well, you got to wonder if this is a sign of things to come for Soul Survivor. Motor Wrestling has never won at Soul Survivor, has never defeated Extreme Takedown Wrestling overall. Could this be a sign of the times as Deuce and Aztexico stand tall in this one? Well, I suppose we'll find out next month at Soul Survivor, but for now, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in here tonight. This is a fucking great show, a, a fantastic episode of Motor City Wrestling. And I cannot wait to see how things pick up next week. So once again, thanks guys for watching. This was uh, this was MCW 165 live from Lafayette, Louisiana. <clears throat> and uh, well, this is your boy Doug the Dog Six, and I'm signing off. Have a happy, have a good night. Have a happy Sunday. Have a fucking great Easter Sunday. And I will see you guys next week. Have a good night, everybody. I'll see you later.